here I am training for our big 5k race that we're going to be doing at Shepherd Christian School on May 14th. Are you participating? If you are a good runner like me, oh yes thank you, thank you, hold your applause, you know that you can't just jump up off the couch and run a 5k. You've got to train for it. It takes commitment. Commitment is our word of the month. Commitment means making a plan and putting it into practice. Now, I have a foolproof plan for preparing for our 5K. And if you want, you can join me in our training. I train by using the three S's. S number one, speed. S number two, strength. Yeah, yeah. S number three, smarts. You gotta use the noggin. So we've got our three S's. Of course, training for a 5K includes speed and lots and lots and lots and lots of running. But it also includes strength. Oh yeah, feeling the burn, I'm feeling the burn. But we also need to train our mind because there's going to be a point during the race when you feel like you just can't do it anymore. You're so hot and so tired and so worn out. You just want to take a nap on the side of the road. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you don't want to do that. You need to train your brain. Commit to what you've started. Train that brain muscle. Start making better choices. Should I eat Cheetos or an apple for snack? Cheetos or an apple? You need to train your brain. Make wise decisions with things you put into your body to fuel them. Today we're going to learn from the Apostle Paul about training. But he was training for a whole different kind of race. It wasn't a 5K, it wasn't a 10K, it wasn't a half marathon, and it wasn't a full marathon. It was the race of life. You and I are all signed up for that race. So, let's get our hearts pumping and our bodies moving as we stand to praise and worship God together. For me a good you hold my future you're working all the time you're the mountain mover from sunrise to sunset till the sun comes back up again you're by my side you started a good work in me i know that you will complete it you will see You are my hope, you are 
are my future You are the mountain mover You are faithful You are my hope You are my future You are the mountain mover You are faithful You started a good work in me I know that you will complete it You will see it through Have you ever decided to do something really big? Like, learn how to play guitar. Or, uh, oh, make friends with the new kid down the street. Maybe you even want to bake a master chef-worthy cake for your mom's birthday. You're super excited to get started, but then you sit down with the guitar and... Oh, no. Or you spend all morning working up the nerve to go knock on the new kid's door and... It turns out he's gone for a week of summer camp. Then you find the recipe for that amazing cake, and it's crazy. Doing big things takes work. It takes making a plan and then sticking with it. There are calluses along the way, patience and courage in building a friendship, and definitely some mess. But when you follow through, you find the music, you grow a friendship, you create amazing edible art. And through it all, others can see how God has given you the strength to stick with it. That's why commitment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. You never turn away, you never leave my side. And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start Trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart Oh, I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing, I will trust you with my heart
trust you with my heart. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 24 through 25. Did you know that some writers of the Bible talk sports? Well, not every sport, but at least one that you are familiar with. Yep, running. Running has been around ever since, well, since God created people. In fact, the Apostle Paul uses running as an example in one of his letters to the church in Corinth. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Now, Paul is talking about more here than just running, but first you have to understand what it takes to run a long race. Let's say you want to run a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. <laughs> There's no way you can just hop up off the sofa where you've been playing video games for months and run that far. So you need a plan. When I was preparing for my first marathon, <clears throat> I found this plan. I started training more than four months ahead of the race, and I started with just a few miles at a time. Once you've got a plan, well, then you gotta move. That means short runs, long runs, and cross training to work other muscles and prevent injury. Next up, you've got to fuel. Plenty of water, of course. Plus, you need healthy carbs for your long runs like bananas. And maybe some spaghetti and meatballs. Mmm. Mmm. What's the last part of your training? Get ready for it. Rest. <sighs> if you don't rest and let your body recover, you'll get burnt out or injured. The last few days before a marathon, you don't even run at all. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Running a long race is no joke. But Paul says what we're doing right now, you and me, is even more important. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So I do not run like someone who doesn't run toward the finish line. I do not fight like a boxer who hits nothing but air. Paul packs a lot of weight into just a few sentences. Whether you planned it or not, we are all running a race right now. Okay, so that's a little crazy. Clearly, I'm standing here talking to you, and you aren't outside running laps either. But Paul is talking about a way of life, a journey. We're all focused on the finish line, life forever with Jesus. But in the meantime, every step along the way is important as we live out what matters most. Jesus reminded his followers, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yep, love God, love others. That's what matters on this journey together. But just like you can't skip from jogging one lap around the school gym to running a 26.2 mile race, you're gonna need some practice. Your Love God, Love Others Marathon needs a training plan. Now, none of us have it all figured out, but here are four important things to start with. In fact, you may already be doing some of them. First point, hear. God is the master teller of this amazing story. He's the author of this whole race, so the most important thing is learning to hear from God. That means digging into God's word and hearing the stories and wisdom from people who walked with him. And you can also hear from God from people around you in your life who know and follow him. Now, here's the second step in training for our Love God, Love Others Marathon. Pray. Okay, when you hear pray, you might think, Truth is, 
You don't need fancy words to pray. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything, just like talking to your mom or your best friend. Now let's take a look at point three in our training plan, talk. Hello out there! Tell other people what God has been up to in your life, what's changing, how you're learning to love others better. And here's the final point in your Love God, Love Others training plan. Live. Live for God. Let His love fill up every part of your life, at home, at school, at church, even when your dad makes you stop reading your book to play a game with your little sister. Hear, pray, talk, live. That's how you practice loving God and loving others. As Paul wrote, so run in a way that will get you the prize. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. And when you do, you will live out Paul's wisdom to the Corinthians and win the race. A race is so much like life. We need to train and put in the commitment. Remember, commitment means making a plan and putting it into practice. Paul said that we need to train our bodies and train ourselves to be ready for the race that's marked out for us, the race of life. Just like we can't really rely on our own strength for running a real race, we can't rely on our own strength for running the race of life either. We need help from God. There's four different ways we can do that. You ready to see what they are? Hear from God. Hello? God? Are you there? I hear you. Step two. Pray to God. Jesus, I love you. Step three. Talk. Talk about God to others. Tell people about Him. Number four. Live for God. Live for Him. How do we live for God? Well, Jesus says that we need to love God and love others. Now that's not easy to do, but our bottom line for today is keep practicing what matters most. It's going to take practice for us to learn how to love God and love others. It's just like it takes practice for us to get ready for our 5K. We need to practice what matters most. Something that might be encouraging to us as we're practicing what matters most is our memory verse this month. Our memory verse this month says, training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. So training our bodies to get ready for a race or a 5K has some value. It's important to make healthy choices for our bodies. But it's even more important to be godly, to make decisions that God would make. It has value in every way. We need to commit to keep practicing what matters most. Now it's gonna be hard to do, but we can do it. We can commit to train little bits at a time. You know, one, step at a time. Let's practice some of our top four ways to love God. Let's pray together. God, we love you so much and we're so thankful that you are allowing us to train and prepare and practice commitment. Help us to keep practicing what matters most. Help us to love you and love others. When that's hard for us to do, help us to remember to hear from you, to pray to you, to talk about you, and to live for you. Help us to remember that training our bodies has some value, but making these choices to follow after you has more value than anything in the world. Help us to have commitment to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you want to participate in our 5K race, check out the website in the link below. That's all we have for today, folks. We'll see you next time. I gotta run. You're my courage, hard enough to be afraid.
Thank you.